see it your way Run the risk of knowing that our love may soon be gone The two young men sat idly in their studio seats, strumming guitars that echoed throughout the studio walls. John Lennon and Paul McCartney transcended their ideals of music. Although the Beatles were mainly seen as a four-man band, Paul McCartney and John Lennon used it as a gateway for inspiring new generations of musicians. The relationship of the duo and band was quite complicated, but in the end, they endeavored through the differences to make brilliant music. The Beatles were the apex of the 1960s rock movement that changed music forever. The interwoven exchange between Lennon and McCartney during the 1960s enabled their exploration of songwriting, instruments, and tone to become unique and noticeable. Although their relationship did not stay as strong, the two explored music in two different directions, opening new doors for the music industry in tone, songwriting, and instruments. Even today, their lyrics and techniques inspire new generations of musicians. The 1950s and 60s were a major turning point in American and international history. At the end of the Second World War in the 1940s, the world was relieved, but the economic struggle soon came into play. It shattered most people's hopes of reconstructing their countries to their former glory. The anti-communist crusade soon rose to power within America's borders, foreshadowing the impending Cold War. The 60s were a tumultuous time as a result of the American Civil Rights Movement, the Cold War, and the Vietnam War. However, where the duo grew up in Liverpool, it was quite different. Liverpool never seemed like the place to give birth to one of the most famous rock bands and duos. Finally, Elvis Presley crashed into the lives of British citizens with the release of his iconic single, Heartbreak Hotel. Elvis soon shaped the rock and roll revolution of the 50s. Soon, a young McCartney and Lennon began to idolize Elvis and fell in love with the rock and roll. Lennon and McCartney was a lasting friendship, but every friendship has to begin somewhere. John Winston Lennon was born October 9, 1940, to Julia and Alfred Lennon in war-torn Liverpool. By the time he was five years old, his father left to his mother and him. He was left to live with his aunt Mimi, but his mother inspired his love of rock and roll within him. In grammar school, he formed a scuffle group called the Quarrymen. They played their first gig at a festival in Liverpool on July 6, 1957. The other half of the duo, James Paul McCartney, was born June 18, 1942, in Liverpool, England, to Mary McCartney and James Jim McCartney. His mother died tragically on October 31, 1956, at age 47. A way of coping with his grief after her death was to listen to Elvis, Buddy Holly, and other rock and roll legends. One day, his friend invited him to see a band called the Quarrymen. After the concert, Paul and John encountered each other for the first time and Paul joined the Quarrymen. As the group continued playing, young men started to leave the large band until only four were left, Paul McCartney, John Lennon, George Harrison, and Pete Best. The Quarrymen soon transformed into the Beatles, a band that covered popular singles and wrote short, catchy songs. This soon all changed when the duo finally interlocked and made unique music. Lennon and McCartney explored music in many different ways, but their exchange enabled them to go further than they ever intended to. As stated by Greg Catt, an acclaimed rock critic, John and Paul shared songwriting credits but little else, and their partnership was more of a competition than a collaboration. This style has become known as co opetition the main exchange between the two, where the writers have different styles and ideas for writing music but still manage to work together. One example of this comes from A Day in the Life, an iconic Lennon-McCartney song from the album Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Lennon wrote this song like any other, taking lyrics from his everyday life. However, Lennon did not have a middle, also known as a bridge, to the song. He asked McCartney if he had any ideas. McCartney replied by telling him he was working on another song. Lennon listened to McCartney's new piece, liked it, and it became the bridge of A Day in the Life. This example of their relationship shows that their collaboration used co opetition They also exchanged challenges with each other and often wrote songs that intertwined. Is, uh, it's kind of like, I think at different periods, there were different influences. Uh, because clearly when they were in their psychedelic era, I think, I think John was, was the leader. Uh, but at, at other points, you know, especially early and then obviously late, I think Paul, Paul was the, uh, the, the, the natural leader. As said by Joshua Shank, he and John, Paul said later, had a habit of answering each other's songs. He'd write Strawberry Fields, Paul explained, I'd go away and write Penny Lane, to compete with each other, but it was very friendly competition. In a sense, the duo was competing with one another, but at the same time, they were complementing each other. What made this duo so unique was their ability to respond to each other's music and make their new piece different from the previous partner's piece. John Lennon and Paul McCartney explored making music through idiosyncratic ways that changed the world around them. 
They introduced the music industry and blooming artists to distinct flavors of new musical instruments, tones, and techniques. Linda McCartney, along with their fellow Beatles, yearned for new sounds, something to spice up their music. One of the most popular examples was a Norwegian wood, which featured a sitar, an Indian guitar, which replaced a usual electric guitar. Along with exploring new instruments, Lennon McCartney still wanted more. What came from this is considered to be one of the best rock albums ever recorded, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. This album had such rich sounds from their orchestra and sound effects, along with new ideas from both Lennon and McCartney. They utilized many of the methods that they created earlier in their careers, such as reversed music. Paul McCartney once said, One day, the tape op got a tape backwards. When he went to play it, bloody hell, it sounds Indian. This happened one day by accident, a simple mistake of putting the tape in backwards. But McCartney and Lynn heard this unique sound and thought it sounded interesting and tried to use it in their new album, Revolver. They soon started to use backwards tapes often in their music, and other artists then followed suit. Such artists as The Who and Jimi Hendrix were influenced by this style and used it in their own music. Lennon and McCartney strive for more unique sounds that complemented their newfound storytelling within their songs. One of the most notable things the Beatles did was using drugs as an instrument in their music and thus changing the entire tone of the albums thereafter. At first the drugs were simply for pleasure, but it expanded to contributing to the psychedelic tunes and lyrics they began to produce. With the exploration of drugs, they began exploring within themselves and topics that weren't popular at the time. Life, death, what humans really were. Soon they began to explore in two different directions where their once productive relationship began to rupture. Therefore, the tone of their albums took a drastic turn from their previous work. Originally, Lennon McCartney's songs focused upon a woman and their love for her. But once drugs were involved, their writing process and tone of all their albums changed soon after. Once the drugs were removed from the equation, their music became more serious, as did the world around them. With their exploration of tone, Lennon and McCartney changed music and the world thereafter. Even after the breakup of the Beatles and Lennon and McCartney, their influence on music and philosophy can still be seen. Within the late 60s, Lennon and McCartney became quite the peaceful duo and started to influence their peers, fans, and even musicians like Jimi Hendrix, The Who, The Bee Gees, and others. Their words in and out of their music were persuasive, encouraging people to become more peaceful and loving. This soon spread throughout most of the world and is still influencing people to this day. One example of this is teens that protested against the war in Vietnam. They were peaceful and loving and in accordance with the philosophies of Lennon McCartney. The amazing duo began to influence the world around them and change the philosophies of the modern age. Lennon McCartney also changed the format of records and their production. As stated by Martin Sandler, the A side of a single contained the song expected to be a hit and the B-side contained a song of less importance. The Beatles forever altered the world of the single having both the A-side and B-side of their records play a song they felt was of the highest standard. By making both the A-side and B-side important, Lennon and McCartney soon decided to make albums have central themes. Their albums became more unique from one another, not always remaining the same in tone. Other artists of their time and present-day artists noticed that this was a much more impactful way of making albums. Many rock groups followed the Beatles and have even left their own legacies. Such examples are Billy Joel, U2, and Red Hot Chili Peppers. As stated before, Lennon and McCartney opened new doors for new generations of musicians including reverse music, instruments from other countries, more insightful lyrics, and so much more. Many people do not realize how much John Lennon and Paul McCartney impacted the world around them. They changed the music industry, philosophy, and the world in general. When John and Paul first met each other after the short concert in Liverpool, they had no idea what their friendship would bring upon the world. These two great men carved pathways to their fellow bandmates and musicians afterwards. They were generally remarkable men who could rival each other, but at the same time understand and compete with one another. The two young men had a greater understanding of the world and people around them, and they touched the hearts of millions and still have an everlasting grip on society. The interwoven exchange between John Lennon and Paul McCartney during their career with the Beatles endowed their exploration of songwriting, instruments, and tone to become unique and heard. Although their relationship dwindled over the years, the two explored music in two different directions that opened up new gateways for the music industry in tone, songwriting, and instruments. Their music still inspires and touches the hearts of new musicians and people in the present day. Now one man sits idly alone in that same studio, mourning the loss of his renowned partner and dear friend. You feel a certain way, and um, that songwriter did that for you. And so those emotions stay with people.